Coming up, we'll look back at the amazing basketball seasons here at UB. The men's and the women's team combining for 56 victories. That's tied for fourth most in the country. We'll sit down with men's coach Nate Oates and women's coach Felicia Leggett-Jack. Plus, we'll introduce you and sit down with new UB athletic director Mark Allnut. It's all coming up on UB Basketball Insider. On Friday, April 13th, here at Alumni Arena, it's one more chance to celebrate the amazing NCAA tournament winning men's and women's basketball teams. A special pep rally will be held inside the arena. It starts at 5.30 right before the football spring game at UB Stadium. Hi everybody and welcome. My name is Paul Peck, now joined by the University of Buffalo's new Director of Athletics, Mark Allnut. Congratulations, Mark. Welcome to Buffalo. Everybody here is excited to have you be a part of all the good stuff that is going on here at UB. I guess the first question when you make the decision that you made, because it's not just the university deciding you're the right guy, it's you deciding this is the right place. So why Buffalo for your next career step? Well, as I said at the press conference, why not? You know, the foundation's been laid here. And when I say foundation, in terms of the facilities that are being built, it's a very exciting time to, to, to be a bull, but also the people in place. You know, you can talk brick and mortar all you want, but when you have an opportunity to really study and be able to really get to know the people and the passion and the pride that they have, for this university, but more importantly, the work ethic. So that's the reason why Buffalo right now. When he introduced you in the news conference, UB President Satish Tripathi used the phrase that part of your job is maintaining the momentum that is already going on here. We've seen the success of the basketball teams and and uh, other sports and the and the likely success this year of football. So how is that a different challenge for you coming into a place that has a lot of good things going in the right direction? Well, it's a challenge because just because you have that momentum now, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you're going to sustain it. So my job is to make sure that we continue that trajectory, make sure that I'm providing the, the resources that I can provide in collaboration with the university and the community to make sure that we continue to have these successes, not just in men's and women's basketball and football, but all of our sports. And to me, that's an exciting time. You have a very interesting background that I think relates to what's going on here at UB. You have been a player and worked at a Power 5 SEC football program at Missouri. Uh, you have been at the FCS level at Southeast Missouri State. And then you're coming now from Memphis, which is in that group of five, uh, you know, lumped in like a lot of people like to, to lump Buffalo in as well, too. How has that helped mold you in your athletic career? And how has all those different levels of experience going to help you here in Buffalo? Well, it's just a, a wide array of both challenges and opportunities. You know, when, you, when you're at the Power Five, then when you go to the FCS, and now when you're in the Group Five, you know, you have certain challenges at those levels. But the great thing is you, some of those you're able to transcend to each place you've been. So for me, I look at the movement from Memphis to Buffalo, being in a major metropolitan area, now coming here to a major, major metropolitan area that has professional sports teams, and how we are able to interact and how we're able to work with those teams and, and be more embedded in the community. So those are my backgrounds, and that's why I feel it's very important to bring those to Buffalo. How much have you enjoyed uh, once the, the, the level of interest began here of watching from afar to see what went on with the men's basketball team and their historic win over Arizona and the women's basketball and their historic run uh, and a football team now that should very likely be one of the favorites in the Mid-American Conference and may very well have a couple of high NFL draft picks in Anthony Johnson this year and Tyree Jackson two years out. Um, what's it been like for you as you've learned what Buffalo is all about? To see all the good things and all the excitement that's happening here. Well, it's been it's been phenomenal. But the, the phenomenal thing about that is again how the people, you know, how our fans, how our alums, how how the great people in this community have responded and have started to support the university. But also too, we can talk about the successes on the court, on the field. But for me, I go back to how well we're doing academically as well. So when you see, you know, the combination both athletically and academically, it's been a it's been a great thing for us. He is Mark Allnut. He is the new director of athletics here at the University of Buffalo. We welcome him. Mark, thanks for the time. Look forward to working with you moving forward. Hey, thank you. Go Bulls. Coming up, the men's basketball team had an historic run this season that included the first ever NCAA tournament win. We'll talk all about it with head coach Nate Oates when UB Basketball Insider returns.
curiosity, ambition, purpose. Here, it's not just what we do, it's how we do it. Welcome back to UB Basketball Insider. This segment is presented by SefQ, changing lives every day. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to UB Basketball Insider. My name is Paul Peck, now joined by men's basketball head coach Nate Oates. You've had a couple of weeks now to think about and reflect on the amazing season and the amazing win over Arizona and the second round of the NCAA. So what jumps out at you? What is wrapped around your head as you think back about what the last couple of months have been like? I mean, I'm just happy for our guys because they put so much work into it, you know, and they – all the time and effort that they put into it and the recognition that they got from beating Arizona and the NCAA tournament, I'm just really happy for, you know, and you think about like Wes Clark and I kind of playing their last games for Buffalo and to have that happen and Wes to almost validate the fact that he came here with just the one semester it was great, but CJ and Nick and Jeremy, I mean, just all of them, they all, they, we finally got all of our guys playing well on one night and shoot, you saw how good we could be that night. You believed all along that your team could beat Arizona in that game. We heard you say that. We heard you say that to those guys in the pregame. Uh, maybe the rest of the world didn't think so, but what would convince you that your guys could go in there and beat a team like Arizona? You know what? When we first got the draw, I wasn't so convinced. I'd seen, we all like, noticed that, too. Yeah, <laughs> was like eight, you know, the Aiton's the number one pick. But the more you watched film, they're not deep. They have one ball handler, and we have unbelievable defensive guards in Carruthers and Jordan. And their spacing with the two seven footers out there isn't wasn't great. So you could shrink the floor, and they weren't a very good shooting team either. So it, what our strengths were and what their strengths were, I thought we could take their strengths away and shoot. And then I didn't think they'd be able to guard Jeremy. Now could Jeremy guard Ristic, his seven footer, and keep the ball there? They didn't do a, a whole lot to get it to Ristic with Jeremy on him. So Jeremy caused them a whole lot more mismatch problems on the other end than what we had going on our defensive end, and it all came together for us. Did you enjoy and your team enjoy sort of being in the national spotlight for a couple of days after the win over Arizona? I mean, shoot, of course the kids enjoyed it. I mean, it's the day of social media. The more <laughs> social media hits they get. Except when they, you took their phones away. Yeah, well, I had to. I knew I mean, it, I mean, knew if I didn't, it would, they'd get no sleep. I mean, they could – I think Wolf told me they the first night there was like 1,800 plus articles written about us and shoot I told them look if you try to go read 1,800 articles you're not going to get any sleep so I you know I, I thought it was great for the guys just you know just to recognize it's all their hard work paid off and 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 the fact that they were so tight and they worked so hard with the chemistry like it. All that, all that work finally paid off. What's the broad impact on your program when you do that, whether it's recruiting, it's knowledge, it's fan base? You know, all of a sudden, a lot of people that didn't know very much about the Bulls now all of a sudden knew a lot about the Bulls. How does that help you and the program? I mean, it helps multiple areas. You know, one, boosters get really behind us, and a lot of people want to reach out, want to help, which is great because there's a lot of things that we – 
can do to make this program better once the kids get here. But then recruiting wise, you can get in some a lot more kids uh, doors now. I mean, you beat Arizona on a national stage, and we've been to the. Tur- it's not like we were some team that that was bad and just got hot for a week. Like we've we've been in the NCAA tournament three out of the last four years. We we were in every single high major game we played all year, and then to finally, we talked to we we read a book called Pound the Stone before the season. We I talked to our kids about finally cracking the stone. You just keep pounding it and pounding it, and eventually it's going to crack. I said like it's time to crack the stone now, and you know it happened for us against that game. So now I think you can put yourselves in with you know a different level of recruit and maybe even what and we've been getting some unbelievable recruits here. So now you can stay in with those type of kids and. Hopefully, get some more of them. Yeah, and the tickets, season tickets, are already flying out off uh, off the shelves there for next year. And if you want to get them, you better act pretty quick and get down here to the ticket office at UB. You lose Wes Clark, you lose a Kenneth Smart, but everybody else comes back. And I know you've said you feel like next year's team has the chance to do something something really special. I don't know what the next special part of it could be, but talk a little bit about what your feelings are for next year. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Wes and I Ken are big parts of what we did, but you know, I Ken is role was a little bit limited with you know I thought his role was bigger like even off the floor just with a leadership type stuff so but our leadership got really good CJ and Nick CJ's been great Nick's been great so you think about who we've got coming back then you add in JV on Hamlet who's been practicing with us has been looking great to Nathan Williams Rondo Sagu I mean, the the sky's the limit for this team next year. I, we're super excited to start working with them. We'll give them a couple weeks off here after the season, and then we're going to get back after it this spring, get the guys in the summer, and, and hit the hit the ground running. I don't know if you need any better reason than that to go out and get your season tickets for next year. It's going to be a lot of fun. It was fun, and it will be fun. Enjoy a little bit of a summer break, Nate. Always good to catch up. Sounds good. Thanks, Paul. Coming up. UB women's basketball became a national sensation this March with their run to the Sweet 16. We'll recap the amazing run with head coach Felicia Leggett Jack when UB Basketball Insider returns. Welcome back to UB Basketball Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. It's about us. It's just our, our sisterhood, our foxhole, and we don't compare ourselves to anybody else. We're ready to go. We'll be ready to play anybody tomorrow. That's who we are. Welcome back to the UB Basketball Insider Show. Now joined by women's basketball head coach Felicia Leggett Jack. About a week removed from the amazing end of your season, and I mean amazing season that unfortunately came to an end. I want you to reflect a little bit for everybody on what the NCAA tournament run meant for you, for your team, for the program, for the national respect level that Buffalo now has in the basketball world. We gave ourselves a huge recruiting tool. I think that now people see that Buffalo is in the state of New York, <laughs> uh, where it's located, and that we're a destination too. It gave our players an opportunity to have a, a, a platform to tell their story. And I was more excited about that than really anything else. And then it showed our young ladies that even the team that won the national championship last year, we can contend with them for 34 minutes. There's more room to grow. There's more players that we need to add to our team to make it beyond that. I see this team, I see this university taking another step to the Final Four. We've tasted the Sweet 16. We were that close to getting to the Elite Eight. Why can't we get to that Final Four? We believe it really now. 
Uh, so much attention comes from getting to where you got. This was an amazing 29-win season regardless. But when you get on that national stage and you get that kind of attention, and like you said, you get a chance for your stories to be told, um, it's invaluable, isn't it? It's invaluable for everything that you're trying to do here when all of a sudden people outside of this region kind of know what the story is. It really is. It was exciting. It was humbling. And, you know, before I ever speak, I ask God to guide my words so I can honor him. And I never know what is on my spirit until the questions asked. And when the questions were asked, it gave me a platform to let people see on the inside of what really took place in my life. How do I see myself now and how I try to pull, reach back and grab somebody uh, to join me? I started a program called Phenomenal Woman Organization when I was at my last job, and we still try to do that. I think that in order to be a phenomenal woman, you have to be pulled by someone above you, as Anuka Brown did and a lot of other women, Marianna Freeman, will let us peace and tell you legates. But when you get to a platform, you gotta reach back down and bring out this with you. And I hope I can serve that purpose soon. Overall, looking back at this entire season, not just the, the, the amazing run to the Sweet 16, but overall, did, did this season meet the expectations and goals that you had for it way back when it started? Yes, the ultimate goal for this team was to have these 14 women, young ladies, form a sisterhood that's going to be beyond reproach for the next 30, 40, 50 years of their lives. And at the beginning of it all, it was about basketball and you're in my position, I'm gonna to try to play better than you so I can earn more minutes. And, and that, as it evolved, it became, we cheer for each other, we fight for each other. And if I don't play a minute, I'm gonna need a shower as well because I left it out there for my sisters. And I think that we've accomplished that. I think that our players understand much is given, much is required, but uh, you, it's okay to love uh, another person's success as if it was your own. We've taught that lesson, and I think they've got that lesson. Behind you is one of the most iconic images of this season, that that hug with Stephanie and Cassie and the team around them. Um, how hard is it going to be to wrap your head around the fact that particularly some of those players like Stephanie and Cassie are not going to be here when you roll the basketballs out for the first practice next year? What you also see is in that picture is swollen eyes and uh, uh, eyes that didn't sleep a lot because we, I wanted to make certain that we've done everything we possibly could to give those five young ladies every ounce of ourselves so they can give everything back that they've given to this university. Those five young ladies has helped create a 3.2 overall GPA academically. They have been ambassadors of our communities, our community. They have been babysitters for the most elite people in this, uh, uh, this Buffalo area. And they played the game to a level where they're the most successful uh, group of women in the history of women's basketball. I needed to not sleep in order for them to have everything I had to make certain they got back what they've given. The five ladies, of course, you're referring to Stephanie Reed, Cassie Ausler, Catherine Ups, Lisa Ups, and Mariah Suchan, the five seniors whose legacy will live forever here. Uh, thanks for a lot of fun. Thanks for a lot of joy. And I think Western New York is thanking you for making all of us realize what good stuff is going on with your program. It's a great place to live. It's a great city to, be li to live in. It's a great place to raise a son. I hope that I give back a little bit of all that has been given to me. Western and New York, we're on the rise and the world knows it now. We switch gears from the court to the gridiron as we check in on spring football. UB Basketball Insider returns right after this. For nearly 100 years, ECMC has brought hope and healing to Western New York. I'm living proof and I couldn't be more grateful. Like cancer, we all hope trauma will never happen to us. But when it does, we can rely on ECMC to always be there. I hope you join me to be there for them and help them build their new state-of-the-art trauma center and emergency department. Visit supportecmctrauma.org to help learn how you can support life-saving care. This is UB Basketball Insider, presented by ECMC, the difference between healthcare and true care. 
Welcome back to UB Basketball Insiders. We've all been caught up here in hoops heaven at Buffalo. The football team is halfway through spring practice, all heading towards what could be one of the most memorable seasons in UB football history. Very pleased where we're at. You can our, our numbers are high, over 90 guys as we started spring, and and the, and the retention and implementing what we want to get done, and our new players picking things up, and the, the amount of reps we're getting is is really been great so far. We've got a ways to go yet, but I love the attitude of this football team. As a whole unit, as a team, honestly, we all find out our weaknesses and our flaws, but after all, we're working on it, and everybody's coming back a lot hungry. Like, we got these little shirts right here for starving, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of players on the team got starving. I mean, it's showing, like, everybody on the team is really working for something, and 6-6 six and six was just not good enough. I think that we were there hungry-wise at the end of the season. We really wanted it. But as soon as Coach Lou came into our program, he really he really bumped it up a notch, you know, reminded us every day how close that is, that one rep is that one point loss. So he's done a great job and got everyone to buy in. We have competition at some positions. We got to get better at, at some others. We're, we're experimenting with some different things on each side of the ball to try to make us better. You know, there, there's a lot of room, like I said earlier, for improvement on what we have to do on both sides and continue to be multiple in what we're going to do so that we can be uh, the type of team that we want to be, and hopefully that'll help us close the gap. I just think do the regular things, you know, above average. It's not anything spectacular that's going to that's gonna make you 12-0. It's doing the, the little things right every time, and, you know, I think that our guys have done a really good job of that. Well, thanks for watching UB Basketball Insider all season long. Your final chance to honor the men's and women's teams comes at the pep rally here at Alumni Arena. It is Friday, April 13th at 530, just before the spring game starts across the street at UB Stadium. We thank you for watching UB Basketball Insider.